I'm Dr. Yossi from Vita Lab, and today I'm going to be discussing with you IVF and why embryos do not stick. There's an age-old debate in uh, infertility and IVF, why embryos do not stick. And the debate centers around, is the result because of the embryo or is the IVF failing because of the uterus? And that really is a big debate that's gone back and forward amongst the IVF researchers. Essentially, the truth lies in both. When you put a good embryo into a poorly prepared uterus, no matter how good that embryo is, that embryo will fail to implant. And if you put a really bad embryo into the best prepared uterus, it will probably also fail to implant. And so what's the key to making embryos stick with IVF? And the reality is that this is what needs to be done. We need to be sure before we put an embryo back inside the uterus that we've eliminated any kind of pathology that can prevent that embryo from implanting. Be that fibroids, benign growths in the muscle of the uterus, polyps which are also benign growths in the lining of the uterus. Often patients come to us who've had previous surgery, previous DNCs which has caused scar tissue inside the uterus. This needs to be attended to so that embryos don't fail to implant. Things like congenital abnormalities of the uterus, be they uterine septums for example, could prevent embryos from implanting and therefore it's important to make sure that we fully investigate our patients before we go and put a precious hard-earned embryo inside the uterus. Another factor which is often overlooked as to why embryos fail to implant <clears throat> is surrounding endometriosis and adenomyosis. Essentially, adenomyosis is endometriosis which affects the muscle of the uterus. And this is where the tiny glands that make up the lining of the uterus migrate into the muscle of the uterus and cause the uterus to be swollen, hostile, inflamed, and this can cause embryos to fail to implant. And this is often a factor which is overlooked whereas if it is treated, significantly improves the implantation potential of your embryos. So now we've looked for and we've excluded pathology inside the uterus, and it's important how that pathology is excluded and treated, obviously, but now we need to find the best quality embryo to put back, that back inside the uterus. Now, embryos can, can fail to implant for numerous reasons, but one of the things that we are able to test for today is to look at the chromosomal makeup, the genetics inside the embryo. So before freezing an embryo, we can biopsy the embryo, genetically test that embryo to see that it has the potential to implant. Now you've got a genetically tested embryo, a uterus that is perfectly prepared, and now you've got a combination that should result in an ongoing pregnancy. The reality, unfortunately, is that we still can have failed outcomes with the best embryo that's been genetically tested, a uterus that's been perfectly prepared. But what we do know from recent studies is that if we continue to put genetically tested embryos into well-prepared uteruses, we should achieve a pregnancy within three embryo transfers. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channels for more videos full of really exciting content and make sure to let us know what you want to hear from us.